Welcome to the Google Cloud Security Showcase, a special web series where we'll focus on security use cases that customers can solve with Google Cloud. My name is Andy, and I'm a product manager at Google Cloud. Today, we'll be walking through one of the top questions we get from customers. How do I detect and respond to threats inside and outside my GCP infrastructure? The Cloud Security Command Center, Cloud SCC, is a security management and data risk tool for GCP resources that helps you prevent, detect, and respond to threats from a single pane of glass. To help you detect threats, Cloud SCC gives you native scanners like event threat detection and cloud anomaly detection to identify suspicious activity and help you take action. To see if there are any threats in GCP resources, you'll need to go to the Cloud SCC security settings page and look under the security sources. There you'll see which of the detectors are enabled. Here you can see that we've explicitly enabled event threat detection and cloud anomaly detection. Event threat detection leverages the logs from your stack driver installation and then processes those against industry leading and proprietary threat intelligence provided by Google. And we can detect things like crypto mining, unauthorized access to GCP resources, outgoing DDoS attacks, port scanning, and brute force SSH. To get, look at and dive this in a little bit more detail, we're able to explore, for example, one of these persistent grants. Here, this takes us to specifically the findings inventory page, where we're able to look for event threat detection, see the different persistent grants, and as we specifically investigate one of them, we're able to see when it was discovered, we're able to see what resource, what project this uh, IAM grant was made in. That is an active threat that is detected by event threat detection. Uh, that we, the source of the data is audit logs. That a member was added to a policy, and this is an example of persistence as a TTP. It has a high level of priority. We can specifically see the ad and the user that was added from outside domain, and the actual person who did the underlying ad. With this information, we're now able to understand better whether this is something that is truly a uh, additional threat that requires more investigation or something that was normal and okay for that particular resource. In addition, we can look at things from cloud anomaly detection. So again, from the summary card, cloud anomaly detection gives you an overview of the different threats that have been seen. We can dive that into that in more detail as well, and you will see the examples of the different threats cloud anomaly detection can find. Outgoing intrusion attempts, coin mining, unusual activity, data exfiltration, alerts and risks, compromised instances and resources, leaked credentials into GitHub, and then resources used for phishing. So if we explore the resources involved in coin mining detection, we'll see that back in March, we were able to find uh, an example of what we thought is coin mining on this particular project in this particular instance. We tell you the specific project that it was impacted on, whether it's an active or inactive threat, who, how it was detected, what the actual IP was from the coin mining pool that was targeting the organization. Similarly, what was the public IP and the actual instance that was the target of the compromise, and the type of mining pool. In both these cases, you can take action by sending the results for more detailed investigation into a SIM, for example, Splunk. We have provide as a sidecar application the ability for you to directly take command center results into Splunk through a Splunk connector. So if we go to the Splunk connector project, this is set up as an app engine application with a number of cron jobs that can either on demand or on a scheduled basis, as you see here every 24 hours, run an ingestion of command center data into Splunk. We can also do a streaming output from command center directly to Splunk. So if we were to say run this ingestion of all the threat data today, we can then go into Splunk. And what you'll see is that you could search for things like the anomaly detections that we just found as well as you can find the ETD detections, such as the Persistent Anomalous Grant. So with that, you have the ability to use our technology 
cloud anomaly detection, which takes a look at data from outside the organization to understand if there are possible threats to your organization, as well as event threat detection that processes your stack driver logs to look at what's happening inside your organization. Once you've detected those threats and you want to investigate more, you can export those to a SIM like Splunk and then follow the rest of your workflow. Thank you for tuning in. Please visit cloud.google.com security for more content from Google Cloud experts.